Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, your home for Linux-related fun and learning. In today's video, what I'm going to do is show you NeoVim. NeoVim is a fork of Vim, a popular Linux text editor, and it's created with love and attention, and a passionate community is behind it, so it's definitely something that I wanted to feature on this channel. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to install NeoVim, and I'll talk a little bit about what makes it different from regular Vim, why you might want to consider NeoVim over Vim, and then I'll give you some basics on how to use it. Now, I'm not going to go into extreme detail when it comes to how to use NeoVim. This video in particular will probably end up being a shorter video than most, because what I'll do is show you the basics, but I do have an entire tutorial series on Vim if you want to learn more, and since NeoVim is a fork of Vim, you could use that tutorial series to learn NeoVim as well. And I can't wait to get started and show you NeoVim. It's really, really awesome. But before I do, I need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. All right, with that out of the way, it's time to dive into NeoVim, so let's check it out. The first thing we'll need to cover is how you go about installing NeoVim in the first place. Actually, that's really easy. On a Linux distribution, such as the one that I have right here, all you should have to do is install NeoVim with your distribution's package manager. If you need a newer version of NeoVim and you just so happen to be running Ubuntu, then you can install the NeoVim package via Snap, which will typically be much newer than what's included in your distribution's repository. In addition to that, there's downloads for Windows and Mac OS as well, so that means most people out there are covered when it comes to being able to install NeoVim. On my end, I'm running Debian, so all I should have to do is run sudo apt update to refresh the package repository index. And once that's done, I can install NeoVim by running sudo apt install, and then NeoVim, just like that. So I'll press enter. And there's going to be some dependencies along with the NeoVim package. That's fine. I'll press enter to accept the default of yes. And NeoVim is now installed. If you want to launch NeoVim, the command is going to be nvim. You can verify that you have it on your system by running which and nvim just like that. And as you can see, I have it installed. I just installed it on my system, so it should be ready to go. To launch NeoVim, you simply run nvim and press enter and that takes you immediately into the editor. Right here, you can see I'm running NeoVim version 0.7.2. There are new versions available. Like I mentioned, if you install NeoVim from your distribution's repositories, then you might end up with an older version. But if you check the website, which will be linked down in the description below, the official website for NeoVim, there's other methods of installation that you can follow if you want something newer. Now, if you already have familiarity with Vim, then NeoVim is going to be quite familiar to you. In fact, NeoVim is going to behave much like Vim, so if you have experience with that, then you should have no problem using NeoVim at all. But for those of you that haven't used Vim before, I'll give you a quick summary of how it works. Now here on my screen, NeoVim is already open. I didn't give it a file name, so there's no file name for the buffer at all. But to start typing, I could press I on the keyboard to activate insert mode, and that allows me to start typing. At this point, in insert mode, NeoVim is a text editor in every sense of the word. I could press enter, I could type another sentence, and just type whatever I want to type. And when I'm done typing, I could press escape, 
that takes me out of insert mode. And if I want to exit, I could do colon and then Q if I want to quit out of NeoVim. Although if I do that, it's going to complain that I haven't saved changes to this file. So what I should do is save the file, which I could do by pressing W for write. And then since I didn't give it a path, I could give it a path right now, a path to where I want to save the file as well as a file name. So I could save it in my home directory, for example. And as you can see, the buffer changed to testfile.txt. The file has been written. Now to close out, again, colon and then Q. Make sure you're not in insert mode. And that takes you back to your terminal. If I list the storage, you can see that I have the test file right there. If I want to edit that specific file or any particular file, what I could do is type nvim and then the name of the file. It's right there in my home directory, so I could press enter and that'll allow me to open the same file that I was working on. Now, I'm not going to give you guys a full tutorial on Vim because, well, I have an entire series that covers how to use Vim. So if you want to learn Vim itself, you could check out that series and what you learn in that series will apply here to NeoVim, so there's no reason for me to go over that again. I just wanted to show you a quick example of, you know, opening a file, saving a file, adding text to the file, so you get the idea. And if you already have experience with Vim, then all of this probably looked very familiar to you. But anyway, what I want to do right now is go over some of the ways in which NeoVim differs from normal Vim. And the first of the differences is where the default config file is stored. Now, if you're used to Vim itself, then you are probably accustomed to the config file being located in your home directory with the name of .vimrc. For example, the path that you see right here. But NeoVim looks for its config file in a different place. So what we'll do is create that config file right now. First thing we'll do is see if we have a .config directory within our home directory. Quite a few of you will already have this directory. We just want to be sure though. And I do because I was able to list the storage of this directory. Now inside this directory, what we want to do is create another directory named nvim. So what we'll do is type mkdir dash p so it can create the parent directory if you don't already have the parent directory of .config. We want to create the directories in our home directory. We'll call the directory nvim and that should do it. So I'll press enter. And now we have a config directory for NeoVim. And for that, I'll use NeoVim to create its own config file. I figured that would be the only way to go here. So I'll type nvim. We want to go into the config directory the nvim directory, and the file name is going to be init.vim, just like that. Now when I press enter, what we have right here is an empty file. So I'll press I for insert mode, and what I'll do is create a line of config right here. I'll just start with something easy. So I'll type set and then number, and this will turn on line numbers within NeoVim. And this is exactly the same as how it's done in Vim itself, because NeoVim is a fork of Vim. But anyway, I'll press escape, and then colon. And if you want to write the file and quit at the same time, we can do colon WQ. And that's what that'll do for us. And that takes us out of the editor. Now, if I open NeoVim again, you can see a number one at the top left. That's the line number. And it's probably more apparent if I open up the config file again, because, well, we have an actual line of configuration here. So we see on line number one, we have set number. And like I said, this isn't any different than how you enable line numbers in Vim. It's just that the config file is saved in a different place. Oh, sorry. I was just consulting my own book, actually. You know, that's something that I do from time to time because unlike what many of you might think, I don't memorize everything that I teach you guys. Sometimes I actually look at my own book if I want to remember how to do something that I don't do every day. But since I'm on the subject of this book, check it out. Mastering Ubuntu Server, 4th edition, written by yours truly. It's available right now, and I think you're going to love it. So if you're looking for an Ubuntu book to teach you everything that you need to know when it comes to managing real Ubuntu servers, check it out. So definitely check out the book. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now, the next difference I want to talk about when it comes to NeoVim is the fact that it has a completely different way of handling plugins. In fact, there's quite a few plugins for NeoVim, and right here, I'm on a website that shows you a list of plugins. If we know the name of the plugin that we want to install, we could type it here in the search box. But if I scroll down, 
as you can see, there's quite a bit here. Now I'll have this linked in the description below if you want to go to this particular site. But what I want to do right now is show you an example of installing a plugin. And I thought it would be fun to install an alternate color scheme. So what I'll do is click on color schemes right here. And I'll just sort it by top. And then we have a number of color schemes. As you can see. So it's really cool that you get a preview, a screenshot basically, that shows you what that particular color scheme looks like. But I've already selected one that I want to show you guys to show you the process of installing plugins in NeoVim. When it comes to installing plugins, there's a few different plugin managers that you can use to facilitate installing plugins within NeoVim. I'm going to show you the process in Vim Plug, but you can use one of the others if you want to. I just decided to use Vim Plug for no particular reason. Now, each one of the plugin managers will have a different process for being set up. So if you use one of those other plugin managers, then you won't be able to follow along with me. But what I'll do right now is show you how to set up Vim Plug. That way you can start installing some plugins. I'll paste in the first command and here it is. I'll leave a link in the description down below to the official blog post for this video. So that way, if you want to copy and paste the commands in order to follow along with me with fewer errors, then you could go ahead and do that. But what this command is going to do right here is install Vim Plug. So what I'll do is press enter. And now we should have plug.vim in that particular directory. So let's just double check. And we do. We can see plug.vim is right there inside that directory. So far, so good. The next thing we're going to do is bring up the init.vim file again. If you recall, it's the one that we used for enabling line numbers. So I'll go into insert mode and I'll add a new section here. I need to add some configuration so nvim knows to load the vim plug plugin manager. And what I'll do is add some configuration for a plugin. So I'll paste it in and then I'll explain exactly what I'm doing. And here's the code. So the format that we see here is pretty much going to be the same for everyone when it comes to how this block of code begins and ends. It's what's in the middle that's going to change. So on line three, we have call plug and then begin. That's how we tell NeoVim that we want to install some plugins. And then when it comes to line four and five, line four is a comment. I want to set up a color scheme. And line five is going to be the actual plugin. You can refer to the instructions for the individual plugin that you want to install for how to get it installed. But in the case of Vim Plug, the process is going to entail setting up a plugin on each line like we have right here. So I decided to go with the Night Fox color scheme. I thought that would be fun. And then on line six, that's going to be the same for everyone. We just want to end the plugin section. And we could always add additional plugins right here, but I'm not going to go over that right now. I just wanted to give you guys a quick example. So I'll press escape to get out of insert mode and let's save the file, colon, W, and then Q. Now, another thing that we're going to need for plugins is to have the Git package installed. This can vary from one distribution to another, but in the case of Debian and Ubuntu, what we'll do is run sudo apt install. And we want to install Git, G-I-T, just like that. I'll press enter. And now it's installed. Now Git isn't specific to NeoVim. That's just a version control utility. I've done videos on Git. In fact, I'll leave a card for one of those videos right about here. But the reason why we needed this is because Vim Plug is going to use Git to download its plugins. Anyway, what I'll do is type nvim to open up NeoVim again. And here it is. But so far, nothing's different. Now there's two reasons why nothing has changed. For example, we installed a color scheme, but this is the same color scheme that we had before. There's nothing different. And the reason why that's the case is because even though we've included the line that we needed to include in the init.vim file, that alone isn't enough to get this loaded. So here's what we'll do. We'll type colon, we'll type plug install, capital P, capital I, just like that. I'll press enter and check that out. It installed the color scheme. So let's go ahead and quit out of NeoVim again. And if I go back into NeoVim one more time, the color scheme is still the same. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you is how you can select a color scheme. We need to select a color scheme in order to use it. So what we'll do is type color scheme. 
and then we'll press tab, and that'll bring up a list of color schemes that we have installed. Now notice that Night Fox is on the list. That's the one that I've installed or the one that I've added to the config file and then installed with Vim plug. So I can keep pressing tab until I get down to Night Fox and then press enter. Now here we have some errors, unfortunately, which can happen if you have an older version of NeoVim. Like I mentioned, this one came from the distributions repositories. So what I'll do right now is show you one of the methods you can use for installing a newer version. So I'll press Q to quit out of here, colon and Q to exit out of NeoVim completely. Now let's see what the process is for installing NeoVim via an app image. So the first thing I'll do is see if I have wget installed, which I do. You can install the wget package if for some reason it's not installed for you. But anyway, I'll paste in the command right here to download the NeoVim app image, which is going to give us the latest version, which is pretty cool. And as you can see, we have nvim.appimage. What we'll do in order to be able to use it is we'll type sudo and then chmod plus x. We want to mark it executable. I have videos on Linux permissions if you want to learn more about why I'm doing that. And we're going to run that against the nvim package that we've just downloaded. And what we should be able to do is type dot forward slash and then the name of the package to go ahead and run it and check that out. I'm running NeoVim again, but the version has changed to 0.9.2. Now, the last time I tried to enable that color scheme, it gave me a bunch of errors. So let's see what happens now. Colon and then color scheme. And Night Fox is the name of the color scheme that I've downloaded. So let's see what happens. Now you may not see much of a difference on my end because I'm using a special terminal just for special effects here. So it's essentially set up as a monochrome terminal and won't show different colors, but it did work. It did apply the color scheme. Now, when I exit out, it's going to undo those changes. So what we could do is add color scheme night fox to our init.vim, which will basically make it permanent. So colon Q, let's quit out of here. And let's edit that config file. And by running this command, I'm using the old version of nvim, but that doesn't matter for this. I'll press enter. And we'll go all the way to the very end here. And then what we'll do is type color scheme and then Night Fox or whichever one you may have downloaded. Escape and then colon WQ to write the file. Now again, if I was to open NVim, it's going to show a bunch of errors because that particular theme isn't really compatible with this version of NVim, the version that Debian provided me. However, I run the app image version that I've downloaded, I get no such errors. So the color scheme is here. I was able to set that up. And now I don't even need to run the colon color scheme command here to change the theme. It's already being applied. Now, obviously there's a lot more that I could teach you when it comes to NeoVim, but the majority of that is going to be from Vim itself, which I already have a tutorial series on, like I've mentioned. But if I find any other plugins or anything else that I wanna teach you guys, I could do a follow-up video. But for right now, I just wanted to create a quick video to get you started on NeoVim, which is what I've done. And there's our video. I hope you enjoyed this video on NeoVim. It was a shorter video than most, but it doesn't take all that much to get you started with NeoVim. It's easy to get started with, and there's a lot to learn that'll help you take it even further, especially if you decide to check into plugins and things like that. But NeoVim is awesome. And if you decide to use it as your Linux text editor of choice, you'll be in great company because the community behind it is very passionate. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please consider clicking the like button to let YouTube know that you enjoy my content. And in the meantime, I have some awesome content coming very soon. So be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.